Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Mid League here at Excellency Esports as we are getting into week two action tonight. My name is Mac Dewey, and joining me here on the analyst desk is the one and only Valley. After a week where half of the series is actually went to three games, how are you feeling about the standings? Standings are all over the place, and that's what's exciting about coming out of week one. Technically, there's a bunch of ties because somebody, you know, technically they're 0-1, some teams are 1-0, <laughs> was it a 2-0 loss, was it a 2-1 loss, did it go to three games? It really is all up in the air, and anything could go any way. Honestly, there's really not a great way to make like a definitive list of standings. We know who our top two teams are right now, probably in that it's Glaive and Divine Ascension, mm -hmm. just given their history in Excellency tournaments in the past. But right. uh, again, we can't really infer too much just from one week. So a lot of excitement, a lot of questions still left up in the air. Yeah, last week on stream, we did actually get to see Divine Ascension play up against Drift Esports, and it was a crazy back and forth uh, two games that Divine Ascension somehow was able to clean sweep over Drift Esports. But tonight, we have two teams looking for some redemption after a rough week one as South Dakota Coyotes are looking to turn things around against Goliath Online. Exactly, right? This is that week two. You know, you had a rough week one. You looked into it. I mean, there was still some things of hope, right? You know, right. South Dakota only got two. It was a 2-1. Goliath was a 2-0. But South Dakota, they pulled a game back. They at least won something have things going on for them. So there's some positives they could take from that. This is where they say, hey, we won a game last week. We can definitely win two this week. We can make something happen and we can turn our, our rough start around right now. You don't have to wait till halfway through the season. We don't have to wait a later into the thing and make a Shalka miracle run. We can just <laughs> do it right this instant. And Goliath is feeling the same way, right? They don't want to be off to a bad start. They need to turn it around. So, uh, I'm excited to see what these teams bring to the table. Yeah, in looking at their uh, first week matches, both of these teams really like to invest in the top lane a little bit. And we're able to uh, make things really close between the top lane and jungle synergy. And we'll really be looking for how these teams try to draft around those two lanes. Valley, are there any champions you're going to be particularly watchful of? I'd love to see more of the bruisers come out, right? We've saw, seen, you know, Renekton played. It's been paired with stuff like Nidalee, carries that can scale well as well. Things like Kane, Kha'Zix, etc. But I want to see some of those bruisers, some of those nice early game combos with the junglers, whether that's Lee Sin, Elise, Graves. Get up there, gank early. Don't put your jungler on a hard engage character like zach don't put your top laner on a weak side like orn i don't yeah. think that's going to bring value to your team you got to get your support on a weak side tank get your you know ad carry onto ezreal something that's going to scale well and you feel like you can stay safe down there you're not going to die let me carry let me get ahead and then we can take the game into our own hands later on yeah exactly and really i'll, I'll also be looking for uh some of the bot lane to to really of pressure we are talking about how these teams got behind early and weren't able to come back even though they were able to pick up some kills here and there there weren't a lot of objectives picked up gonna start with the pro draft here and that means our time is up here on the analyst desk uh but we're just gonna pass it on over to the casters sitting in the booth right now head over to lot thoughts and doctor Thank you so much for that introduction, Mac Dewey. My name is Loud Thoughts. I am joined on the desk tonight by none other than doctors. We're hopping into the pro draft here. So we're going to go ahead and start off by calling out what we see so far. Renekton and Fiddlesticks being banned out from university. And then on the other side, we have Nunu and Willem being banned out for the red side team. Yeah, and for those of you not watching ProDraft, you may think there's four bands already through, but it's actually just three. The Nunu Willup combo, making sure to terrorize everything in their path. I am happy to see it on the band phase, even if it is a little curious. Uh, but I mean, look at the rest of this coming through. Samira, Vladimir, definitely worth some bands here. And I am excited to see what we're actually going to get first picked right now. Yeah, I'm curious to see what is going to be picked up in the first pick. 
a lot of times you do see either you know priority top laners or priority 80 carries especially being banned i am intrigued to see that that's samiria's banned on the blue side though typically considered an extremely strong champion right now i guess it's something that university of south dakota must not feel comfortable playing with as the final ban coming out is going to be that lulu are we expecting maybe something like an ash or a caitlin or something of that sort to be picked up here in order to get some early priority in the bottom lane it is entirely possible uh with some other marksman picks being viable now um it is not super common to that we've seen in these amateur leagues to pick up their marksman first um and right here obviously the coyote is picking up the thresh support for that blue side pick very curious there are tons and tons of first pickable champions right now um that do offer a little bit more flexibility than potentially the Thresh does, uh, but it really shows how comfortable the Coyotes are running that in the bot lane because of the safety, the engage potential, just the general utility of the Thresh pick. And on top of that, it is going to be a takeaway pick, taking that away from the Goliath team as well. Their bot lane support, Balbuin Arikol, does play a lot of that Thresh. Um, one of his main champions, he plays it considerably more than any other support that he has in his repertoire right now. So a great pickup, both for the side of the University of South Dakota, as well as taking away from their opponents. So you'd love to see those kind of counter picks being uh, taken into effect here. Yeah, and I mean, right now we're already seeing some picks that you could have potentially picked first as well. The Misfortune's doing super well right now in the bot lane meta. Lilia, super, super strong. We've seen it all throughout the World Championships right now. We're seeing it all over solo queue and organized play just forever. Um, super duper strong in the jungle to be able to counter gank, gank fast, you know, power farm, whatever you really want to do, and can still be this late game monster that's just super annoying and hard to lock down. Um, the Ash pick finally going to come through for U of SD. They are going to make sure they have this very safe, you know, controlled bottom lane um, that they are going to have to survive through the misfortune. Yeah, I mean, I do like to see the Ash pick coming in. Still a very strong champion, despite seeing some nerfs over the past couple of patches. But most importantly, what that means is that you have a lot of pick and engage potential coming out from the bottom lane of University of South Dakota here, which allows for this Volley Bear pickup that they also ca that they ha now have, which can go into the jungle or into the top lane. But it opens up more avenues for engaging that doesn't require your volley bear to be the main form of engage i personally am under the impression that volley bear using the stormbringer should be a secondary form of starting off a fight and that cc should be coming in from other members in order to allow the volley bear who is a tanky frontline member and does have cc to play more towards the damage side where he enjoys taking extended brawls not taking the upfront of all the damage but instead letting somebody else absorb the damage or picking off somebody who's already been cc'd and you're 100% correct. Volibear should not be your main or only form of engage. You are correct in assuming it is going to be going into the jungle. As much as Riot will nerf that jungle piece to try and force him to topside or buff the AP version to send him mid, he's found a very solid position there in the jungle with his friends and buddies, who he slaughters mercilessly. Um, and I'm curious to see interesting how it plays into the Lilia who can clear so fast, who can counter invade, who can be annoying. Uh, whereas Volibear has those same features, but is more tanky with less damage output as the game continues on. Morgana, Misfortune, super strong bot lane. You love to see it. And as we head into the second half of the ban phase here, we're starting to see top laners being banned away um, from Goliath Online. That is a good sign. They're going to be forcing themselves, uh, forcing them onto something bruisery, not giving them the Orn, not giving them the Scion or Maokai for a final ban. I would hope to see those. I do like to see Un University of SD banning away these really safe top laners here. It is going to force Goliath in order to pick yeah. either their mid or top lane blind here. They don't know. This Volley Bear could go top, could go jungle, as we mentioned before, but taking away the Orn really big. Banning away the Fizz is a little bit of a curiosity to me, though, as it does leave open the Maokai or the Scion, as you mentioned before, and we will see that Maokai getting locked in so still a fairly safe fairly defensive blind pick for a top lane for goliath so so far so good for them i think they're getting just about everything that they were looking to pick up here yeah, and Goliath also now has the added benefit of getting the final counter pick for their mid laner, which if you're banning away a Fizz, you know that mid laner strong. Fizz is so ridiculously OP that there is a reason you ban it away from certain players. And as we head into these last final 
picks. Hope oh, what is happening? We got a Hecarim and a Rumble, and you no longer know where anybody is going. Those last three picks can go mid, top, or jungle in any form and any combination whatsoever. Hear me. I'm going to take a blind guess, and I love going for these. It's going to be a mid rumble, top lane volley bear, and a jungle hecker. I don't really see the hecker going into the top lane, though. You could, you know, potentially run that using the phase rush, using the conquer, whichever way you prefer to play it. Yasuo lock in. We'll get back to that into a second. I do want to say, however, that. I was hoping for a Shen pickup out of University of South South Dakota here. It is that classic world combo top lane and jungle that we've seen time and time again. I'm not sure exactly where the Shen would go if you have a volley bear. I guess we just have to run the volley bear mid and play for uh you know play for the mid game with that pickup. But a rumble, still another one of those like bruiser style champions. That's gonna be really interesting to see as we go into the champion select here. We have a couple of minutes here to break down these team compositions and I want to talk about the Yasuo pick. Yeah, the Yasuo pick fits in very well with the Maokai. It is something we used to see all the time. You still may see it in solo queue. Having that knock up on such a short cooldown thanks to the Maokai, almost always being able to have access to that last breath ultimate. It can be really problematic if they're able to get ahead or even if they stay even just because you get so many stats out of that last breath and can really rip and tear through the opposing backline because of it and with uh university of south dakota not having that many tanks let alone true tanks because volibear He's pretty squishy for a true, true tank, right? Like, he's no Orn, he's no Maokai. He has too much of the damage component in him to be, like, a true, true, unstoppable wall tank. Um, and there, there isn't a whole lot stopping Yasuo outside of just hard CCing him and killing him. The problem is you need at least two hard CCs to get that job done. You need an enchanted crystal arrow into a death sentence, or you need a thundering smash into a death sentence or, or some combination of this that, you know, locks the asshole down long enough that they can't win wall. They can't dash out and they can't just survive essentially. Um, but now to combat that you have the black shield and the Morgana. Yeah, and I think that that really does summarize kind of the beauty of the strength and weaknesses of the University of South Dakota's team composition here. I don't see how they're going to be able to kill this Maokai. He's going to be an extremely tanky frontline member who's going to be able to deal with a lot of the CC thrown his direction. You have the wind wall, you have the black shields in order to keep this Maokai from being CC too long in case he does get picked off here. So it's going to be a real struggle for the University of South Dakota in order to kill the frontline and play this kind of front to back uh, composition. However, what they do have available for themselves is they have a lot of backline access. So if the University of South Dakota is able to pick up a couple of kills early, find a lead or get good flanks with their team composition, you can absolutely expect to see an onslaught of shadows into an equalizer on top of MF and Yasuo. And what are they supposed to do when they get feared into that burning ultimate, the carpet laid out before them? Ash can look for these long range enchanted crystal arrows. And like we mentioned earlier, all this leads into the Stormbringer from Volibear as well, who can be that secondary form of engage, find his way into the backline and get some burst damage down onto the immobile carry that Misfortune is. Yasuo, a little bit harder to deal with, but at the end of the day, you only need to deal with one of those two carries because if you can get that pick at the start of the fight, it means you're going to have an additional carry for yourself leading into the rest of that team fight. Yeah, and as we're hearing the lock-ins being finalized, we are going to be finding out shortly who is going where on that uh, Coyotes sign, um, side, excuse me. Uh, and I think you are going to be right in your prediction that it is going to be the Volley Top, Hecarim, Jungle, Rumble, Mid. Um, it does kind of make the most sense, right? Like Hecarim can be, you know, that top lane carry, but... The potential for getting heck a ganked is is pretty strong in that top side with the Lilia being able to just roam up and decimate you, um, which means we do get the centaur matchup in the jungle. Not something that we've really seen as of late. It will be a interesting matchup for sure but as we're getting ready to wrap up the rest of the champion select here we've talked about both of these teams what they're kind of looking to be do, doing a little bit for each of them but at the end of the day i want to get your personal opinion how do you feel these teams fared in terms of draft and which one of these teams are you expecting to see that first victory go over towards so i think goliath online came in with a very strong 
um, set of champions. You know, we've seen these champions do very strongly individually, uh, combo them together. It's a very strong unit. You know, you have the Misfortune, Morgana, Balain, very hard to deal with. Um, lots of crowd control into lots of damage. Uh, if you pick an immobile bottom lane, it can be very difficult to just survive. Um, and then Maokai, almost immovable. Uh, I mean, we've seen how good Orn is and Maokai has been like that antithesis almost where they're just noodle fights in the top side and yeah so everybody knows yeah so they've all played solo queue we all know what's gonna happen but i think that um the coyotes have uh really pulled together a decent unit they're not super um meta picks in what they're actually doing um you know not often do we see like the volleyball top and the rumble mid but they they bring things to team fights that are not super relevant right now right like they are going to be so far from left field that you can really start squeezing people and taking advantage of some of these different situations that people aren't used to right like how often are you getting you know hecarim feared into the you know the uh equalizer like that that hasn't happened in years even and so now you have to somehow play around these chokeholds that much differently these objective fights that much differently and so you can't just brute force your way into that dragon pit securing a dragon and then taking the team fight uh, goliath online are gonna actually have to think about how they want to approach these objectives yeah, it is going to be an interesting uh, matchup of team fights stylistically. So with that, we're going to have to just wait and see how these teams are going to be able to play out these team fights. So as we hop into the first game, don't go anywhere, ladies and gentlemen, as we are going to be getting ready to hop into this first game. We'll be throwing over to a quick break here. We'll see you guys shortly.
All righty, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back as we're going to be hopping into the first game of the night between South Dakota University and Goliath Online. It looks like we have a little bit of a stack going on for both of these teams here, so we'll see if anything happens. But to introduce our teams on the blue side, we do have the University of South Dakota with Envion playing the Volley Bear in the top lane, the White Wolf. With the jungle hecarim alex pi 2 on the rumble in the jungle trinity wave on ash ad carry and tenor clef on thresh support and then on the red side we do have goliath online with terp sneaking in from the top side Ooh, and they're not even gonna deal. let me finish oh but look at that death sentence so he's going in that's gonna be the thunder coming down as envion gets the first blood of this game literally a force to flash over the wall to safety but looks like they're gonna rest they're gonna get out safe there as we uh have a first blood, but let's go ahead and finish introducing our red side team. Yeah, Goomba Stompin was forced to flash out of that uh, Krug camp. We do also have Babuin in the mid lane with that Yasuo solo queue style. And then on the bottom side, we do have Melmo. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that one right. We may just shorten that to Elmo for comedic effect. And then the cleaner closing up shop there in the bottom lane stealing souls doing all types of demony stuff with that solstress morgana yeah and it was an interesting first blood that is for sure it's not going to mean a whole lot because i do believe you still have those early game uh gold deficits on the the, the pre two minute first blood but it is going to mean some pressure going over early to the top side of University of South Dakota. We can see he was able to go back, pick up those boots and an extra couple of potions for himself. So Envy is going to be feeling pretty good about that one. Yeah, it does have the boots. I don't know if that... Hmm. Is that what I would have chosen? No. Probably not. As a disrespectful top laner, I would have gone Cull. Uh, it's the perfect item for all your gold farming needs. It's super gold efficient. Plus, it makes you look good and do more damage. Uh, it's basically like the working out of item selection. Yeah, I mean, if anything else, you're able to get the extra gold at the end of the day. Say nothing else happens in this top lane. Envium doesn't get to get anything out of the lead that he has. You also get the passive gold from getting able to CS more. So that's always nice on top of all of that. Goomba Stompin was forced to back quite early here. So he's now finally making his way towards the top side of the map. However, White Wolf will be clearing his jungle quite low at this point. I'm curious to see where the first few ganks are going to be going on this game. As we were kind of talking before the series started of where are we expecting to see these two teams play out of? Yeah, and it, you can kind of look to your standard weak side, top side, uh, or situation, weak side, strong side, excuse me. Um, and when you have you know a essentially top lane carry in the form of a bear getting first blood just for existing uh you kind of want to prioritize that lane if you are um south dakota you i mean look at this damage that is absurd like yeah but Lilia is in behind there hold on envy <laughs> he flashes the turret. it doesn't care he's just gonna take the 1v1 and now there's white wolf that shows up as well goomba saw but of course to back away from this one he's trying to make his way down towards the middle lane hoping that this yasuo is gonna be able to rotate his way up there babu and showing up as well but envy he comes in one more stun and that is going to be the volume bear sitting two zero and one as he donates that kill over to the rumble in the mid lane three oh start for the university of south dakota yeah, this game is going quite off the rails already, and that is exactly what you need to do if you're the White Wolf. You need to be prioritizing the strong half of your map, the side that already has all the kills, the side that has this early game stat advantage, and look at that. You just had to show up. You burned your ghost. Doesn't matter because you got a flash for it, and you get a kill assist. You get two of them even. Or no, one, excuse me. Was it I mean... A kill assist is a kill assist. A lot of teams don't use their summoners aggressively enough in the beginning. However, we do have a death sentence landing in the bottom lane and yet another gank coming in mid at the exact same time. There is so much action going on in this game as University of South Dakota is looking to just run away with this one. Yeah, I mean, this is already looking pretty scary for the side of um, Geo. They do have the scaling factor, though. They have the Lilia. They have the Miss. Uh, the Misfortune. They have the Yasu. Both of these champions are going to scale super powerfully by building um, AP Bruiser in the form of Lilia, you know, picking up the Leandrus Torment and then trying to go full tank after that just to make sure they can stay alive in these team fights and be as annoying as possible. And then you have Ben doing on the Yasuo, who is Yasuo, right? You're going to build four crit items and crit for 8,000 damage and nobody's going to be able to stand in front of you. 
But I mean, look at this minion wave. That is so much gold for Envian. Ooh, that's if he doesn't take the back half of this trade poorly. Chirps is doing his best to try and shove this one in, trying to trade into Envio there. We do see the Volibear drop it down extremely low. Lilia is available on the top side of the map if she wanted to try and, you know, maybe have some kind of dive. Hecarim's nowhere nearby as well, so potential there, but it looks like instead they're going to back off as that entire minion wave, as you mentioned, it's just getting absorbed by Envio as he's now finding himself a 10 CS lead already at just five minutes into this game. Yeah, you're already seeing Terps going back to base, just trying to pick up, you know, scraps of items, trying to stay relevant in the lane, can't keep taking these awkward trades. Um, th the build path from Envion is still kind of confusing to me. He is going to be picking up the Merc Treads, um, but it's not necessarily helping you push the individual lead. It's helping you push the lane lead because as the Merc Treads, you're not going to be taking as much damage from both Lilia or Maokai so you will survive ganks slash counter ganks a little bit harder, but you're not killing the Maokai harder who will always be relevant thanks to their abilities. And we did mention that this Maokai wants to kind of be playing that that weak side. He's a blind pick tank into that top lane. He doesn't really expect to win lane. It's just trying not to lose lane super hard. Come into the mid game team fights with all the CC and survivability he has and play for his team more than anything else. As we finally see this game slowing down just a little bit for the side of Goliath here, which they are glad to have a fresh breath of air dragon is up and available on the map and i'm curious to see a couple of wards already placed down towards that bottom side are any one of these either one of these teams going to be interested in trying to pick up this objective this early on though potentially there is time for it they do have the positioning for it we're already seeing you know these bottom lanes trade very quickly trying to get that priority off um but only one jungler is in the area Ooh, one jungler is on the bottom side because the other one's in the top lane. He goes in. That's going to be a stun. Terps does use the ultimate order to keep himself safe for now. Chillings might come in out to slow him down as White Wolf and Envy want to try and finish this one off. They may have to commit a little bit harder than that, though, as Envy goes in. He brings down the thunder once again. He's able to find himself yet another kill in the top lane. Yeah, already 3-0-1. Very scary polar bear in the top side is just going to be able to continue that lead. And if you look at it, they're rotating down to try and take this Inferno Drake. They have the mid lane, they have the jungle, they have the push in the bot side, so this should be uncontestable. But you have to look at the champions that exist for the Coyotes. They do have the Equalizer available. Onslaught of Shadows not quite there yet, but they're going to be engaging anyway. And there's the damage! There's the Collapse Equalizer finds four. Cleaner is able to find one as White Wolf wasn't able to get there in time and does give over his life for free, unfortunately. But it's going to be the flash away from pretty much everyone else on Goliath. Flash forward from Alex Pai in order to trade for one for one at the end of the day as Misfortune also forced to use that defensive summoner. This Rumble, though, is not done. He's going through the jungle. Is he going to be able to find one more? No, the Exhaust barely not able to finish that one off with the burning flamethrower and it will be a one for one at the end of the day but most importantly goliath are able to actually find the dragon there yeah thankfully it's just an infernal drake at this stage of the game not super impactful it only gives you a percentage of your stats and at this point you don't have that many stats to percentage um and being able to pick up the kill on top of that as well having it go over your support is less than ideal but hey you're just fiending for any type of monetary benefit you can pick up right now like you have this top laner who's not having a good time seeing a lot of gray screen unfortunately and you know there isn't a lot of assistance coming their way there's there's not going to be that much time for Goomba to make his way into the top side. That's disaster. That's that, that heartbreaking. That's big. That is a bonus gold shutdown. It's only 150 gold into the pockets of Boo Boo in there, but it's going to be gold into the pockets of a Yasuo nonetheless. Huge pickup there for the mid laner of Goliath Online. Yeah, and that is uh, a disaster for the 07 power spikers out there as well. You know, everybody wanting to see. Oh man, are we at that stage of the game already where White Wolf is able to kill the enemy <laughs> mid laner 1v1? Not oh, we're dead in there. <laughs> but it's close. They're not close. Or it was close for sure, not quite, unfortunately, as Envyon still getting these trades on the top side of the map. But yeah, it's, it is a big deal for the Yasuo in order to pick up that one. Unfortunate for the 07 power spikers, as you were mentioning, Yasuo is not going to be throwing away too many kills this early in the game. But. Picking up that zeal and finishing the boots this early on. He is going to be opting towards his Berserker Greaves. Not sure how I feel about that pick up here. Um, but it is going to be, you know, 50% crit chance into his pockets early. 
Because we do see a fight. Breaking out bot lane. The cleaner goes in. He gets the ultimate off on Morgana. Is able to CC down Tanner Clip. But unfortunately, the bolt time not going to be focused onto this Thresh. And so instead, he's able to flash out. Unfortunately for the bottom lane of South Dakota, it means that they have to use all of their sums there. There's a great ultimate out of the Morgana. It's going to force that one out. And they do hold on to the Enchanted Crystal Arrow for that entire fight. I don't know if it was a lack of mana or just wanting to try and bait out that Black Shield first. Um, but it meant that they were able to just have a consistent damage output from Melmo. You know, didn't have to rely on... Or deal with that stun or even use the cleanse right like if you're gonna trade summoners at least try and trade summoners effectively um but so it does mean that now goomba stomping can make a gank into the bot side and in the top side terps is terps is having such a rough day yeah that's gonna be a rough one for me buddy unfortunately it's gonna be going down there four zero and envion is just absolutely running away with his lead on the top side using the stormbringer there taking away that turret aggro so he doesn't even have to worry about you know, the extra damage coming from the turret once that happens, not much Maokai can do in terms of damage. Yeah, I mean, he's never really going to win the damage duels anyway due to press the attack. Uh, you know, Volibear always going to have that slight advantage, but you know what Volibear's hate in the top side? It's when their opponent gets 900 gold and builds a Bramble Vest. It is their biggest weakness in the top side. It's their least favorite thing. We do have a mid gank going on here. That is going to be the sleep coming out. Alex Pie is able to put down the red carpet though and keep himself alive for now. Knock up though by Bob Owen as he goes in. He finds White Wolf who did not even consider using the Onslaught of Shadows there. Didn't have an opportunity once that tornado had landed. And he goes down. Another kill for the Asuma in the mid lane. Yeah, one of the issues with the jungle hacker is you're so squishy. You can see them attempting to build up that Cinder Hulk with the Bami Cinder, but you know, that's a couple hundred gold not going towards their trinity force it's a little bit more survivability but you have a freaking yasuo on the enemy team it's it's tough to survive that at any stage plus you have the last breath with the bonus armor penetration there is a ton of stats coming out of yasuo at this stage of the game that you need to be a little bit more wary of so that you don't lose the control that you've spent so much time building in early yeah, and we've been talking about how this top lane has been popping off really hard for the side of University of South Dakota, but hold on, we do have a fight coming around this Herald real quick. Goomba Samba trying to back away from that one. He's got the speed, but one more auto attack will find that one. Meanwhile, bot side Soul Shackles come in. Melmo is able to find one for themselves as Cleaner finds yet another binding. Great double kill picked up by the bottom lane Goliath Online. This is definitely my biggest concern for the Coyote spot lane. There is so much damage and uh, lockdown potential coming out of Melmo and Cleaner. The Morgana, if you can dodge out on a death sentence, or even if you're just brave enough to run right through it with the Black Shield, you can lock down the Ash so easily. No flash available at that point. Still has the Enchanted Crystal Arrow on cooldown available as well. Not using that, not having the opportunity to use it means the cleaner is able to get the soul shackles in lands the dark binding afterwards melmo no fear can just walk forward auto attack use the bullet time and just lay waste to the opposing bot side we have the rift Hell drop down on the top lane but mid lane we have a fight going on here that is going to be ultimate coming out by the ass one or give himself that shield back he has to flash away from that from that flamethrower but he's going to be able to make it away rumble is forced to back off of that one but that sentence though around the river double sleep that's going to be lilia going in eep run away as a double kill comes in for the side of goliath online and they're able to find themselves the second dragon of this game and they have even up the scoreboard at seven to seven yeah, this is looking pretty disastrous for the side of the Coyotes. They are losing advantages very quickly. And we're going to take a look at that last play, that last dragon fight. You can see here there's two candy pieces above the enemy bot side. They get instantly sleeped. They attempt to use the Enchanted Crystal Arrow, but it gets black shielded right away. The watch out eat doing massive damage. And then the roam down from Babudin being able to pick up yet another kill onto that Yasuo. You know, is super far ahead now, super strong, has the completed Phantom Dancer on top of the Berserker Greaves, and we're looking potentially at a 7-1 power spike instead of the traditional solo queue special. Yeah, and if you're watching this from the side of Envion, you're wondering, like, team, what's going on? You know, you all need to slow it down. He's sitting at 4-0 and zero on this Volley Bear, and he must be wondering how is he going to be able to deal with this now fed 
Yasuo and Misfortune because he is stacked into magic resistance here, opting to go towards that completed Spirit of Visage as his first item, just now picking up the Bami Cinder, and so he does not have the armor available when these team fights, as we start hitting this mid-game section, start to break out. Yeah, he is going to be forced to do something now. Yeah, he's going to be forced to take a fight here is what it looks like. Red Buff trying to be picked up here, and it's going to be the Yasuo once oh, again. No finding a shutdown, but this time it is a hefty 400 additional gold. Babawin looking to take this game under his control. And that is just super greed coming out from Envion. Oh boy, Flash never forward, ends. that's going to be an attempt at the bot lane. Soul Shackle comes out Woo! and stop and finds Tenor Clef. Every time we think the fighting stops, there's a play coming in from Goliath online. And it's not over yet. It's not this time, though. It is going to be the University of South Dakota trying to make the play. Onslaught of Shadows forward coming in, trying to finish off this Morgana, but an excellent stopwatch keeps her alive. As now, Ash is trying to do the same and gets beat down by Terps coming in with that teleport. It's only Alex Pie left alive here, but Bowen running him through the jungle, and he's going to have to back away from that one, but it's so many kills going over to the side of Goliath. Yeah, and they're getting breakpointed on. You can see the first set of items coming through for the carries of both teams. The problem is the number one item spike for Goliath Online is that much stronger than uh, the Coyotes. They don't have the stats needed to really be these, you know, dominant team fighters that they've tried to set up a team around. Um, and I mean, that fight there at the bottom side, we saw it happen. We saw the engage coming in from the enemy bot side, the teleports coming in, the counter engage attempt from White Wolf. We're using that onslaught of shadows, plus the equalizer coming down as well just slightly splitting up the team fight, but the damage coming in from Baboon and the uh, Melmo's damage, it's just too much to deal with right now. It's a little too easy here for Babawan now as well. Coming in, finds the tornado, gets the easy last whisper into the knock up there. So, sitting at five and one, this Yasuo going into the top lane, is it gonna be able to find? No, he just backs away there. Envion realizing that he is no longer strong enough to deal with the solo laners of Goliath online, but what is it that that University of South Dakota at this point now needs to be doing in order to try and find themselves back into this one? They had such a strong early game, and now it seems like this game is just slipping away from them. Yeah, they're finding themselves at odd numbers a lot of the time. They're trying to take fights where there is the opportunity for Goliath Online to collapse and use their higher number advantage to win these team fights between that and baboon being able to pick up these stragglers out of these odd number team fights is giving him so much leverage and so much gold plus you have the abundance of greed coming out from envion in that top side giving up the massive shutdown gold uh, it's just really allowing the pick composition portion of goliath online to actually come online you need to group up you need to sacrifice potentially more of these towers um you know you have only one or sorry two what yeah one tier one down in the form of the bot side and so if you need to sacrifice mid and top you need to do so you need to focus yourselves around both either the herald or the dragon and make sure that you can actually team fight as a composition around those objectives yeah, there's a lot of commitment going on in the team fight for this jungle, for this river, though, as that's going to be the Hecarim who used everything going for it. That's a great bullet time, though, as the cleaner finds himself into the backside of this fight. He's not going to be able to get a whole lot done here as Melmo, though, is as he flashes forward. One more auto attack is not going to find it onto the Rumble, trying his best now to beat down Envio, who does find a double kill for himself off the back of that teleport, but he is now the only member left alive as he falls over. Melmo will find the shutdown on that one as well as it's going to be a two for four at the end of the day and yet another successful team fight for goliath just in time for the dragon as well they're going to be able to pick up their third dragon and they are going to have that soul point available for themselves and with the zonia's hourglass completed for the cleaner we're seeing these teams overcommit in a certain fashion and we're looking back at that team fight you can see the white wolf just blowing so many cooldowns here to try and get the kill on the cleaner trying to get some sort of advantage the zonia is buying so so much time for the soul shackles to come through the wind wall is going to 
block both the death sentence and the volley and the perfect backline tornado from baboon just absolutely deletes the ash from the planet and there's just nothing left to be done for the side of the coyotes at that point they don't have the damage they don't have the tank stats and now they're just simply outnumbered envion is able to pick up a double kill thanks to the red buff but it, he's not that tanky he only has the magic resistance and when you're fighting against misfortune and yasuo you need the armor yeah, it's just an unfortunate situation. Envion going towards that tanky build, as we mentioned before, being the benefactor of four kills in the early game and then opting for an early game spirit visage may not have been, you know, what we were looking for out of this volley bear in the top lane, especially when you're running that press the attack, you know, bruiser fighter style uh, volley bear in the top in the top lane. So something to keep in mind for your own solo queue games at home. If you have a lead, put it into damage. Try and, you know, really take advantage of your opponents that you're playing against or else something like this might happen where you find yourself with a completed mr item and no armor to deal with a fed yasuo and misfortune both sitting at six kills apiece yeah i mean he's in the unfortunate position where had he gone the damage items he would actually be in a slightly worse position had the numbers stayed the same um because then he wouldn't even have the magic resist to deal with the lilia slash malachi he, he would be even squishier um but i mean they, it's not uncommon for top lane volibear to pick up like a trinity force or something to try and supplement their damage and be very mobile with the speed boost and the sheen prog it, it works but because of him recognizing the type of game that this was going to be eventually having to fight off yasuo misfortune and lilia i i think overall it's the correct decision but it just kind of feels bad yeah well this is also why i'm an 80 carry man don't play top lane i don't know how those top lane matchups work out in terms of like best itemization for tanks bruisers however it goes but we do have a bit of a tussle going around at this bottom side of the map though that's going to be melmo finding one for himself bullet time finds it hecker trying to get into the back line but will not be able to find too much for himself as a double kill for the 80 carry one more double snipe coming oh, out boy. lilia morgana working together on that one to finish off a third member of university in south dakota as they break this mid lane outer turn they had a little bit of knowledge that they were going to be there they have this one little ward there in the bottom side of river bush they could see people mulling in and out um and tenderclef makes the strong decision to try and get the pick off onto the enemy jungle support and all of a sudden they have a lot more friends than you do and that is one of those odd numbered team fights that we're talking about you know it started as a 4v2 it was just trinity wave and tenor cleft there trying to make a pick happen and then all of a sudden everybody shows up and they're like oh man we've really made an oopsie we need to correct this by not being here anymore and that is when white wolf says i will save you guys i will be the hero of the story and is forced to um Onslaught of Shadows out of danger ends up going down anyway. Um, and then just the absolute pickoff coming out from Cleaner and Goomba with the Swirl Seed uh, Dark Binding combination. That's a lot of damage. It's tough to survive that as an AD carry. <laughs> Yeah, Goliath Online is just so far ahead at this point. It's going to be a real struggle for University of South Dakota to find them way back into this one. They're looking at a 5,000 gold difference between these two teams, as well as Soul Point available for the side of Goliath in just a couple of minutes here. One more minute on this next Dragon Spawn. Keep in mind, it is going to be a Mountain Drake as well, a Mountain Soul, which means... The already difficult to kill Maokai, the, the, the MF that has not died at this point so far, is going to be even more difficult to kill. Same with Lilia, same with Yasuo. Just the insane amount of survivability is going to be provided for them once this final dragon comes through. Yeah, and I mean, they're having so many completed items. They're picking off the enemy oh. jungler with... 30 seconds Jungler's left. Gonna be going down. Equalizer coming in. We'll trade it one for one at the end of the day when it comes to junglers, but that's going to be a knockup. Alex Pi is not going to be able to find the lantern, so he goes down to the hands of Melmo. Now 9 and 0. Volleybear comes in. He's sitting at the front line, but there's nobody there to help him. The rest of his team members are dead, and Ash has no way to deal DPS through those corridors without the vision available for himself. And so Envion, through that teleport, throws away his life as well. It is now three members of University of South Dakota dead as Dragon is spawning onto the map. Yeah, and they don't need no stinking junglers to pick up the dragon. They have plenty of damage and survivability between the rest of the squad, and that's a dead Ash picking up the Dark Binding into double up combo. That, that's scary. I mean, I it, feel it's bad for him. yeah, I, I 
that's definitely the ash uh lifestyle um let's take a look at that teleport one more time uh we can see here um goomba and cleaner are just roaming around the jungle i think my uh replay broke unfortunately it looks like we did have a pick during that whole time we're having a little bit of technical difficulties with the replay on that one so during all that time though mountain soul will be picked up a yet another kill going over to the side of goliath online white wolf will be trying to steal that one away but the entirety of go knew it was coming and so morgana was prepared for that one dragon soul already in favor at 25 minutes to goliath online yeah, and it's a very concerned effort from Goliath Online to make sure they do get that soul as well. Um, we haven't seen any pressure around the Baron um, pretty much at all. I don't think we even saw any Heralds, if I'm remembering correctly. Uh, looking at uh, the game once again. No, there was a single Herald. Um in their game earlier so i mean they're not even spending that much time topside goomba stomping recognizing that that's weak side you don't want to be there you need to be focusing on the rest of the game you know yasuo was able to do their own thing and get ahead on their own merit um and so you can just allow the bot lane a little bit of assistance focus on those dragons make sure that you do get that soul point and i mean look at this you have such a lead that you can actively spend time doing nothing just waiting for the enemy to walk in yeah, and they waited for sure for them to walk up, feeling safe around that mid lane turret as they force this one in. It is going to be Mel that's going to be jumped down. He's going to get picked off by the top lane jungle duo of University of South Dakota. Now, is they're going to be able to keep this one going as Yasuo is still alive? He finds himself a double kill. Lilia finds one as well. And what was started off as a great pick onto the AD carry, a turnaround for the side of University of South Dakota will be picked up as a four for one. Now, look at it be a full ace for the price of one. Envio doing his best to try and kite this one out. Baboen gets stun up but it's not going to be enough envio goes down eventually and it's going to be three it's going to be two for five and this might be the inhibitor going down yeah i mean a really great decision there to survive after you already carry goes down it's just one piece of the puzzle and the you know conceded effort from that jungle top dude just to make sure that uh melmo is not gonna go deathless they make sure to take that one through the game uh and we're gonna take a look at this again you can see they've abandoned the fanatic bush they're going for the team fight they do get one in the flash stun into stormbreaker into onslaught of shadows memo did not stand a chance actually they didn't even get feared so they had a bit of a chance there and look at the bottom half here you can actually see the rumble versus Lila fight almost go in favor of Alex, Alex Pie, but it just simply wasn't enough. And at that point, the damage dealers of the uh, Coyotes are dead and done, and it's only getting worse. Actually, that's Speaking getting better. That's better. Speaking of Rumble versus Lilia fights there, we had a bit of a 1v1 tussle going on during all of that. Lilia will go down to the eventual three-man collapse of University of South Dakota. And surprisingly, they have their jungler in the bottom side for Goliath trying to take the split push, which means there is going to be no Baron available despite how many people showed up bottom side. And it is going to be just a, a free shutdown and free kill going over to the side of uh, University of South Dakota. And they need every little bit right now. Um, they do need to funnel a little bit more gold onto the Ash, who is feeling a bit starved at this point. Only 200 CS um, is the same as the Rumble, but... Your rumble's basically done. Uh, hmm. Merlinomicon. That is an mm -hmm. interesting decision, uh, to say the least. Uh, looking at the game state for the last, call it 15 minutes, I definitely think it completed. Zonias would grant you more benefit here. Um, there isn't a whole lot of healing on the side of Geo. Obviously, Maokai heals up on passive auto attacks, but before the cut list there wasn't even any lifesteal on the squad um and that couple seconds of invulnerability there could be almost incalculable in value um but the rumble should be full build by now you should be funneling it all into the ash who does need to continue scaling does need to continue getting stronger if they want to try and just melt through the potential frontline coming in from goliath online 
Absolutely, and if you really needed to get the Grievous Wounds that bad, you can simply pick up a uh, Executioner's Calling on your Ash. It's only 800 gold compared to the 1600 additional committed gold that you need to be placing onto a full Morella Nomicon, whereas that could have been spent on the Zhonyas. I totally agree with you on that one. We are sitting at just, we are hitting that 30 minute point in this game. Neither team really looking to try and start up this Baron just quite yet as both top laners are on the bottom side of this map. So it looks like this might be the opportunity that Goliath has been waiting for as we see pings coming down. They clear out some wards around here. Are they going to be starting this one up? It looks like they will be. Both top laners do have teleport. Both have ways to interrupt the teleport themselves. But look at how much time is being spent on these control wards. Enchanted Crystal Arrow is going to connect onto the support and the teleport's coming in and this is the team fight. That's the team fight because they're able to find Yasuo, but Bowen goes down. That is the Morgana Force using early Zonyas. They're not going to be able to get the Soul Shackles with that one. Trump's now trying to get this one turned around, but it's just buying time for his team as a great bullet time over the wall from Memo there. is able to pick off the enemy support. Flash forward from Gubastop and finds Ash. This may be the turnaround. He gets the double sleep. This is the re-engage that they need. Oh. A double kill for Lilia. Misfortune is able to find one. It is only the Volley Bear left around. You may have been able to start this fight off, but you are too far behind University of South Dakota, and that is going to mean what is likely the game for Goliath Online. They are going to be able to finish it up here. Tons of super minions already in the base. They don't even need the Baron. Goomba stomping, flashing forward to win the game, recognizing that the Ash had no HP remaining. Just solid Lilia play here. We're actually going to get this uh, game end right now. 7 4 14 on the Lilia, 10 stacks on the Dark Seal, went for the AP Bruiser build, and you can see how incredibly strong that champion can be. And I mean, when you pair it with a strong team, as always, it just shines that much better. Yeah, it's it's a great composition in general. They're having the Misfortune and the Yasuo paired with this Bruiser Lilia in order to provide some kind of AP damage for your team as well. The Morgana and Maokai also picking that up slightly for themselves. You know, not the biggest damage dealers in that support and tank, but it does provide, you know, a massive amount of uh, AoE damage from both types of damage. So it's extremely difficult to itemize against putting Envy on White Wolf, Tenor Clef all in a very difficult position to determine, hey, do we focus the Yasuo? If we do that, it leaves MF and Misfortune or Misfortune and Lilia still available to play this game the way that they want to. So just a few too many damage sources, a few too many members of Goliath online were uh, strong enough to be able to deal with whatever was thrown at them by the hands of South Dakota University. But with that, I do think we're going to be wrapping this up. Should be throwing it over to the analyst desk in just a second here if I can get confirmation from production. But any last words on this game from uh, from yourself, Doctor, before we get ready to throw this over? Yeah, I do think the draft needs to be a little bit more streamlined from the Coyotes. I think they need to focus on... Um, a simpler, easier to execute comp. I liked what their composition can do, but I need to see what they do do. Um, so as we kick to the analyst desk, I would like to see their breakdown of that draft in more detail. We actually do have a break coming up first. So it'll be a break then analyst desk. So we got that one confirmed for you guys from production. So we'll see you guys in just a couple of minutes here with the analyst desk covering that game. Don't go anywhere as we get ready for game two as well. See you guys soon.
Hello everyone, welcome to the welcome back to the mid league uh, uh, analyst desk here at Excellency Esports. My name is Mac Dewey. Joining me here still is the wonderful Valley. And after what looked like a clean early game for the Coyotes, see, things seem to kind of just fall apart for them. Yeah, it wasn't really a story of David and Goliath. It was honestly just Goliath smashing David. <laughs> At the uh, as we hit the mid game there, <laughs> it, like you said, it looks like it was really, really good. If we look at the positives here for the side of South Dakota, their early game was great. We said we mm -hmm. wanted to see them play top side, pick up a bruiser. Vala Bear fills that role very nicely, and they got him ahead. And then he built tank, right? And then they didn't mm -hmm. gank any other lanes, and they didn't get, take those kills and transfer that tempo and value that they got from those kills down into the river, into Rift Herald, into mid lane, into bot lane. They weren't taking the pressure they were creating and that lead and creating more leads from it, right? It wasn't stacking mm -hmm. on top of each other. It just kind of stagnated and Goliath jumped on it. So credit to Goliath for turning it around, but everything kind of fell apart there for South Dakota. Yeah, I think we were watching the game as well. The moment that really stood out to us was there was a bit of miscommunication, it seemed like, constantly for the Coyotes, where you have Rift Herald being used in the top lane with the bot lane trying to take Dragon on their own, and things just looked rough. I, they get to go on red side this match and potentially counterpick the top lane. They put Volleybear up there, the... What are you looking for potentially, Valley, for them to turn things around with that counter pick slot, maybe? You have to give counter pick topside, right? We've seen that they have to, you know, play through topside. They've never played through bot side, not last mm -hmm. game, not last week. Um, and it's not that I don't think they could. I don't think their bot lane was playing particularly poorly. Right, it's just yeah. that they didn't they didn't draft a bot lane that was gonna hard carry them the game. So if you're gonna draft mm -hmm. towards topside and you wanna play to that, you have to go up to the top side, you have to give your uh, top laner a carry. I think Volibear was fine, but if you want to put him on maybe a stronger bruiser, something like Renekton, Aurelia has been popping up in the meta recently, even something like Aatrox, something that he can absolutely just demolish and carry on if he gets ahead, right. then you can play through that top lane and you can do that, but you have to give him a carry thing and not just a tank. 
Yeah, and looking over for what Goliath is going to be able to do in this upcoming draft, they get to go on blue side. They can potentially look to get an advantageous bot lane again. The Misfortune and Morgana was pretty safe overall, winning some fights. We potentially thought they wouldn't have been able to, but it was really around the mid lane that they popped off and they had a really good performance around there. They definitely did. I think the mid lane was a very strong side of the map for Goliath, but uh, at the end of the day, it didn't feel like they played through it particularly well at the start. So if they could pick up that early game again, that'd mm -hmm. be great. But hey, that's just our opinions. We ha we get to watch, sit back and watch and see what <laughs> happens. So that's, you know, that's what I'm excited for. We're going to throw it to the casters for draft and we will see you guys on the other side. Thank you so much for that introduction, Valley, as we get hopping into game two, draft starting up here. And you're absolutely right. As the analyst, you get to start off by watching the games and then coming to us with your wise words of wisdom afterwards. So we have to just try and figure out what is going on in the moment as we are hopping straight into this one. Nunu is going to be the first ban as both of these teams have elected to swap sides here this time. Goliath Online will be taking the blue side with University of South Dakota on the red. Yeah, I think heading into this second draft phase, it is going to be up to the Coyotes to really pull together a more cohesive unit. Goliath Online, you know, they had the Maokai Yasuo, you know, mid top duo that you know, was really able to run through the second half of that game. They had the Lilia who was just lights out perfect at certain points of the game and that one's just immediately banned away that one they're not even going to pretend to have an answer for they're just like no just get this stupid dear lady out of my game um and so they're going to ban that away they do give up the first pick ash but you just pick caitlin here and you win the game pick caitlin pick caitlin caitlin please Caitlyn. It's not going to be Caitlyn. Uh, honestly, you could pick the Thresh here or something. Um, I, I don't think the Ash Thresh lane was poor. They did give up a couple solo duo kills, which was rough, but that's the design of the Misfortune uh, Morgana lane. So if you can get Caitlyn, Morgana, Caitlyn, Lux. Morgana. Can... Yeah, I mean, right? I, I, do... I think you do pick Morgana here. You get one of the strongest absolute bot lanes available in the game right now. Um, and you can really punish the Ash. You do get opened up for like a Tom Kench support, which does a decent job at keeping the Ash alive. Um, but then you just focus the Kench and kill him. Um, and it, it does open you up for some awkward counter picks later in the draft. So they're actually going to opt into the Kane, which is going to be one of the more played champions right there. Yeah, I definitely think that it's the Caitlyn Morgana pick here because not only do you get, like you mentioned, the strongest bot lane combination, one of the strongest bot lane combinations that you could like draft for yourself, but you also have the Black Shield available to deal with the Ash. And we see the Caitlyn Ash matchup a lot these days because Ash has the volley, has the range in order to try and match this damage with the Caitlyn. And if the Caitlyn ever steps out of position, you just enchant a Crystal Arrow here and you can actually punish the champion who only has one form of mobility and it's that, that 90 caliber net, not the best way to escape escape a gank and so you know super easy setup super easy landing phase for this ash to be able to try and match the caitlin unfortunately goliath did not take that morgana away so it will be setting it up for university of south dakota to pick that one away on second rotation instead goliath online will be picking up a fiddlesticks orn combo so this was actually banned away in game one. Um, you know, we saw Fiddlesticks in the first half, Orn in the second half, and Goliath Online and just like, you know what? They didn't ban it, so we're just going to pick it, right? It's super duper strong. Um, Fiddlesticks can really roam the jungle very quickly. Does have that neat little feature of being able to drain double camps at the same time thanks to the um, annoyance tethers that go along with the jungle camps um, so it can clear very quickly can go in and out of lanes quite effectively and if you're not on point with your warding just ruins your entire day like you play a game of fiddlesticks and if you don't ward you go to bed so angry you just call out of work the next day so it is going to be up to the coyotes to really be on point with those wards or else they're going to get crow stormed into the goat horn and it's just gonna not leave any room for error I definitely am much more favoring the Goliath online composition here so far because what I'm seeing is a go button for Goliath 
You see what I did there? Go, go. Okay. Um, they have a go button though, and that's going to be the Orn Horn with the Fiddlesticks Crow Storm, or the Enchanted Crystal Arrow with the Fiddlesticks Crow Storm. So you have a couple of these long-range engage forms that will open up an avenue for Fiddlesticks to hop into the back line and start off these team fights in a way that it's going to favor them. Whereas the University of South Dakota, so far, they have a Morgana binding, but that's honestly about all they have going for themselves so far and they've already locked in the jungler in this cane so i'm curious to see what are they going to be looking to pick up next that's going to provide the the hard engage that they are really lacking at this moment because on top of not having the ability to start their fight on their own there's not a whole lot of cc in general for university of south dakota and they want to deal without fiddlesticks you have to have some way to either stop them from running through your entire team or hopefully having preventative cc to stop them from just coming over the wall in the first place with that crow storm yeah, and I would like to see them pick up an Orn counter. Uh, they did ban away the Fiora, which is very strong. Uh, there are still things like the Camille, the Jax, um, you know, things that can really give them an opening tool. And they're actually going to blind pick the Orianna here. Um, you know, Goliath Online have not picked their mid laner yet. They are going to be able to get the counter here, whether it is that Fizz reminder. Fizz was banned game one, so that's obviously an option. Does do fairly well into the Orianna. Um, can evade a lot of the tools that Orianna brings to the table, whether it's the Dissonance or the Shockwave. Plus, you do get some pretty high kill um, possibilities post six, uh, especially if you do okay in the farming lane and you can pick up some items here and there. Um, and so it's actually going to be the Zed. That is a throwback. Holy moly. <laughs> wait i i live for this i love when watching these teams come out here with like niche picks that specifically plays into the hands of somebody who knows how to play that yasuo not the most popular champion in pro play but we did see it for a while they're paired with the gragas but it is something that you know go was willing to go towards um zed another one of those picks that i guess babawan is willing to pull out in the mid lane and i am super excited to see how he's going to be able to play that one kale also something i'm super excited for because envion was 4-0 in that last game he knows that he has the top lane matchup and that he he's feeling good about himself coming into this one so picking himself a hard scaling carry style top laner i'm looking forward to this zed versus kale honestly like for the late game that's going to be super exciting for me man this is not an easier to execute draft so oh boy uh <laughs> There are definitely a lot of moving parts in this Coyote draft. You know, they have the Kale, who isn't a champion post-11. Uh, does need a lot of time to get going in order to be, you know, that hyper-scaling late-game carry that you need them to be. Um, you know, you are going to have to babysit that a little bit. Kane is going to want to be in these lanes, dealing damage to champion, collecting all those soul orbs. Um, and with there being only two melees on the map in order to get that Rost form, they are going to have to be spending time either in the mid or the top lane. But if you got Kale, gank for the Kale. There is almost zero gank assist, so it's going to be a, an unfortunate gank to uh, mess up. Uh, but if you can keep the Orn down, keep the Kale ahead, then a lot of the other problems that the Goliath Online draft can bring to bear can almost get negated because you can either then sit Kale in a side lane, force multiple members to rotate up to try and get a kill there, or you just invulnerable whoever gets death marked and hopefully win the team fight from that point forward. Yeah, there's definitely seems to be a much easier to execute cop coming in from Goliath, as you've mentioned. University of South Dakota. I like the, the style of champions that they picked here. A lot of these champions are ones that I personally play and that I enjoy playing, but putting them all together in the fashion that they have is not really leaving them much room to play for their own win con because they don't have any form of starting fights on their own outside of the quick dark binding. They don't exactly have, you know, the most consistent of damage either because Kale does take a really long time to scale up. Caitlyn is going to be weak in the mid game. You're going to be relying on Kane and Orianna mostly going towards that middle mid game, hitting their one or two item power spikes. And that's if Kane is able to get his early transformation in order to try and get to the point where Kale just kind of takes over the game. But this entire time, you have to deal with an Orn that's going to be matching your scaling, the Zed that's going to be looking for picks all game. And if you ever try and group up for a fight, now you got to worry about the, the, the Fiddlesticks Crow Storm as we keep coming back to. So extremely difficult comp here for University of South Dakota to try and put together. And we're going to have to see how the Coyotes are able to make that one work. 
Yeah, I think a lot of it kind of hinges on the Kane pick itself. Um, it is not a very common pick whatsoever right now. Um, has not been very popular in pro, fit, pro play either um, because of the volatility of the champion itself. Um, you know, pre-evolution, you're only half of a champion. You don't get any of the stat bonuses on any of your abilities. Um, and then once you are finally able to transform, whether it's Rost or Shadow Assassin, you know, that in itself is a bit of a coin flip. You know, you can obviously determine what champions you can fight into to try and pick a form um but they picked it so early in the draft like when they picked it the only champion you're seeing is ash so you're like all right i have one champion and it gives me shadow assassin which is nine times out of ten the weaker form right so how can you plan a game plan around that thankfully goliath online picked into it a little bit by picking that orn that melee who does eat a ton of damage who is gonna be this just heavy target for ganks um it, but if they had picked a ranged top laner if they had picked like a nar or a i'm just gonna say Vayne because she plays top lane and she's ranged like <laughs> the whole composition that resolves around Kane being relevant just completely falls apart because you're almost essentially forced into Shadow Assassin at that point and with a Karma, you're not dealing that much damage. Yeah, and you know, Shadow Assassin Kane, not the most most highly contested pick out there. I am curious to see how they're going to be able to play around this top lane specifically for University of South Dakota. As you mentioned, Orn is going to be kind of the, the weak side lane here, and so you have a scaling pick in the Kale, but depending on how Goliath is able to play around the top side, do they let this Kale just push in? I would expect them to, and if Envy is constantly pushing to that lane, you know, leaves Kale open to some pretty easy games for the Fiddlesticks, on top of the fact that it denies Kane access to that lane to try and, you know, get those early game ganks off, get those early stacks towards that Rost upgrade, but... We're hopping into the three-minute spectator delay. We're going to give ourselves one opportunity here to talk about this draft one more time here. I think we both agree for the most part, but let's hear it for, for sure. Who do you think won this draft, and how do you think this team's going? that winning team is going to execute their, their play style? So I'm just going to send it. Uh, I do think the Coyotes do have a very strong composition in the kale oriana caitlin um, i think they have a lot of good supporting tools with the morgana and the oriana if they can get this game to go long and don't give up too many kills to baboon again and make sure that zed doesn't become this hyper carry i think they stand a very strong chance of winning uh barring one just miraculous crow storm in from goomba stomping that just you know ends the game i think they have the tools they have the gameplay we saw it early on in game one that they were able to get a lead and their lead was able to then push it further in anvion i think they have the tools i think they have the champions i think they can pull out a w here all right i guess we uh we have differing opinions on that but there's only one way to find out for sure and that's to give us a couple of minutes as we throw over to yet another small break here as we get set up and ready for game two don't go anywhere ladies and gentlemen do not touch that browser as we'll be back in just a second hopping into game two between goliath online and the university state of south dakota university of south dakota here at midweight at the midweight tournament for excellency we'll see you guys soon
Oh, sorry. There we go. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, as we're going to be hopping into game two here of the series between Goliath Online versus University of South Dakota, hopping into this one right away. Introducing our blue side team, we do have Goliath Online this time around with Terps playing the top lane, Orn, Goomba Stomping on the Jungle Fiddlesticks, Babawan Agricole 9 on the Zed in the mid lane, and Melmo and the Cleaner playing Ash Karma Bot. And on that blue side, we do have the South Dakota Coyotes. Uh, we do have Envy on in that top side. Carry looking to pick up all the kills. The White Wolf roaming around on this uh, nebulous hunter. Alex Pie 2 with the stalwart ball in the mid lane on the Oriana. And we do have Trinity Wave and Tanner Clef holding down the stereo in the bottom lane. Yeah, and so far, both of these teams... Look like they're trying to stack up once again for maybe an invade this time around. Neither team really committing to it too much. Just putting in a ward, though, an advantage for Goliath online. They're getting a deep ward placed onto the enemy red buff. So that will see the cane as it goes around. I am curious to see, White Wolf is not starting on his top side of the map. Typically, when you play cane, one of the things they can get away with is uh, starting his raptor camp instead of uh, blue or red. Yeah, it does signal to me that they are going to want to gank Terps as early and as much as possible. Uh, going this route, you do get uh, the double buff into topside start. Um, pretty standard for junglers not named Kale, like you said. Um, the option to start on the Raptor camp is there, uh, but they want to get that Kale fed. They want to get those soul orbs onto the cane. Uh, they are going to be a little bit slow. Um, Fiddlesticks, I believe, should be able to get up there faster. I don't have the exact timing on his double buff clear at this stage, uh, but it's pretty quick. Uh, he can do a lot of damage to those minion camps early on um, and can survive quite well. Yeah, and I do like to see, I, mean, I noticed it on the minimap, I think that this Fiddlesticks did both his Raptor and his Red Buff at the exact same time. So one of those things you can do with Fiddlesticks, leash your Raptor camp and your Red Buff out to a position where you can absorb both of them. You heal with your W, so you're totally fine to be taking up both camps at once. So you love to see that kind of hard farming, um, you know, optimization coming in from Goomba Stomp in here. However, it will, does look like White Wolf will make his way towards that top side of the map first. And then Goomba Stompin will make his way shortly after. Yeah, that is due to Goomba going over to the Krug camp. Uh, Fiddlesticks not super amazing at Krug just because of how long it takes. Um, and, you know, even those last couple minions can be a little difficult for Fiddlesticks to take out at level two. Um, but it gives him level three. He's going to be able to double clear that wolf and. Um, blue buff camp so he should be still on pace with the cane um but cane already having completed both raptors and the red buff is already rotating into this top side and looking for a gank yeah he's going to be trying to make his way into the top side that's going to be a dash forward coming in a dash away from terps though we'll keep him safe there as one little poke from the cane will give him some stacks towards his passive but nothing much made in the top lane out of that one yeah that's uh no huge loss, uh, you know, it does let them know the game plan, though, of, you know, gank top. But I, I think anybody looking at this game knows that you're going to be ganking top side. Um, and look at this. Terps already trying to set up a freeze uh, to do exactly what you were talking about in Champ Select, where you just deny that farm from the Kale. Bottom lane, some heavy trades going back and forth. That is going to be the Ignite drop down onto the Cleaner, though, trying to get himself a kill, moving very far forward on Trinity Wave, and it's going to be a heal used by Melmo in order to keep Karma alive. So that will be one defensive summoner advantage going over to the side of University of South, of South Dakota. Yeah, it is a pretty good start up here. The Karma has been doing a ton of work. Oh no, is he forced? Oh boy. <laughs> this is something we didn't touch on earlier uh, because we were so focused on the scaling Kale. Um, people forget how much damage Orn does. It's not it's not abnormal for him to solo kill his, you know, scaling opponent. It was something we kind of mentioned. <laughs> yeah, talk about damage there. Yeah, that's uh Yeah, that's what we were kind of afraid of for a second. Something we were talking about during the during our short little break though was that this Kale, yes, it's a great pick into the Orn because it's scaling pick to match a scaling pick, but it's only a great pick if Envion doesn't die pre-level 6 because he does not have access to those ranged auto attacks until he's able to, you know, hit that level 6 point, in which case then he can farm safely away from this Orn because, as you just mentioned, Orn does some damage in the early game and people tend to forget that. 
Yeah, Grass Within the Dying being a percentage HP does hurt quite a bit, um, especially when you're not in a tank v tank matchup. Um, and so that does delay the scaling quite a bit. We're already seeing a 20 CS advantage. 20 CS advantage as the gank goes on mid lane. White Wolf spending quite a bit of time around this middle lane. Not wanting to give Babawin too much to work with that Zed pick. Something we haven't really talked about a whole lot at this point. Playing an Assassin, you want to get ahead early. You want to try and pressure out Alex Pi to not let this Orianna get too many items or too many levels ahead of you. As we do see, that will be level 6 for the Orianna first in this lane. But Babawin should be able to follow just shortly behind here. Once he hits six, he might be looking to roam a little bit more and start training some leads as that assassin in the middle lane. Yeah, and I'm starting to get really concerned for White Wolf. Um, we've only seen them just barely tickle Orn in the top side, so they're falling pretty far behind in their soul stacking. Uh, it could potentially be quite a while longer before they actually get a transformation and become relevant. And when we're already talking about how important it is for the Kale to scale and transform, quote-unquote, effectively, um, by hitting level 11, by hitting level 16, you needed Kane to be the early game transformation that, you know, sets you up. Oh no, that's going to be the Ornhorn into the Crow Storm, as we have talked about before. The Kale doing a great job with our Transcendence in order to keep herself alive for just a little bit longer, but the White Wolf comes in and almost gives over his his life for free on top of that one, donating that one, but instead is going to be able to make it out with just barely a sliver of health bar left. And the kill going to Fiddlesticks means that that scaling is now online as well. You took the mid-game jungle and you executed them into the early game and you're starting to scale better. And White Wolf still without souls. This man is feeling dry. He is not getting any of those orbs available to them. Um, and I mean, you can even just roam topside or bottom side, excuse me. Um, it is going to be blue. Oh boy. Is that enough? That's an engage. That's going to be the ultimate coming oh! out. Bow, but oh my goodness. He's able to trade it back. The great shockwave coming in by Alex Pye in order to tell the Zed you stay under turret. That was a perfectly executed shockwave. I cannot remember if I've ever even seen that. That is insane. The timing on that can be so tight to be able to make sure that you actually get the uh, CC onto the opposing Zed before they're actually able to get out with the shadows. But because Oriana's dead, no teleport available, White Wolf is dead in the jungle, not even able to keep the blue buff for themselves. Yeah, and... There's that issue of the scaling picks coming out from the side of South Dakota here. As we mentioned before, if Kane is not able to get that transformation going for himself early enough in this game, he's going to be susceptible to plays like that. Now a full level behind on the enemy jungler. That is also going to mean the dragon going over for the side of Goliath online. We saw them get started early on those drakes last game. It looks like they're going to be picking up their first one for themselves about eight minutes into this one as well. And that will be yet another early game advantage going over to Goliath this time around. You know, sometimes I miss Klepto Kale. Uh, I miss it, it too. It would make uh, this early game a little bit more palpable, um, seeing as Envion was able to get some good harass on, you know, maybe a couple hundred gold extra, maybe has a completed item or two, or one and a half. But, oh boy. Oh my goodness, that's the engage. Goomba stomping coming over from the wall to try and stomp out the bot lane. But a great heal by Trinity is actually going to mean that the Dark Binding and CC provided from from the Coyotes is going to give them a kill into the hands of this Morgana. Shutdown gold going over to Tenor Cleft as we do have a gank going on top side. White Wolf trying to get himself some stacks up. He's going to get a Q. He's going to get a W. But that's going to be about it for White Wolf is once again scrapping by here, trying to get whatever little pieces of the soul orbs he can. I would be uh, interested to talk to um, White Wolf a little bit later sometime to discuss the thought behind the Kane pick. Um, we talked about it off screen. Uh, replace Kane with Sidwani, and you have quite possibly one of the stronger drafts available. Um, just because of the scaling and the early game pressure. Um, the Kane is ahead in farm, which is really good when you're comparing it against this Fiddlesticks, who has been spending a lot of time you know, trying to impact these lanes um, and wasn't super successful down at that bot side, was able to get you know, the kill up on the top side. That's great. You love to see it. And will continue to do more. Has a completed runic echoes. Um, but Kane 
later on, once they do have access to the Rost, will be a bit tankier, will be a bit more disruptive to the team fights minus Crowstorm, um, and could potentially be that mid-game carry that they still need. Yeah, and something I do want to point out, though, for 10 minutes into this game, four kills to two, the gold lead sitting at about 1,500. It is not the worst position that South Dakota could be in here. You know, as long as they're able to keep kind of this tempo that they have going on where they're not losing too much too often. Fiddlesticks failed his first Crowstorm uh, gank there, or his second one. He did get a successful one on the top side of the map, but to show that you were able to deny him that play on the bottom side of the map, you just put uh, Fiddlesticks on a timer. It looks like he is going to be trying to go back towards the bottom side once more, though. That's a current chat to Crystal Arrow. The Crowstorm comes out, and this time he finds success as Melmo picks up that one, and his second kill goes over Go Goomba stomping. Meanwhile, top lane, the White Wolf shows up. Is he going to be able to find the ultimate flash for it? He will be able to get the jump in there. Terps is going down extremely low as White will find himself a successful game for once. Yeah, that is going to give him a much needed influx of gold, an influx of soul orbs, and should be that much closer to getting Rost available. Um, but that gank in the bottom side, massive. They're able to get that repeat gank. I love to see Goomba stomping, ulting off cooldown every chance they get. And because the um, because the Coyotes bot lane is so aggressive, being the Morgana Caitlyn, they're pushing so far ahead. They're creating these opportunities for the ganked to come through. And right as the camera panned over to that gank there, you could actually see the Black Shield had just been activated onto Trinity, trying to make sure that the AD carry does stay alive. Uh, but that completely opened up Tenor for the Enchanted Crystal Arrow into the Crow Storm combination. Yeah, a bit of an unfortunate combination there. As you mentioned, do you like to see this Fiddlesticks making use of that ultimate on cooldown will be a huge thing to see him continue and apply that pressure as he was able to finally find a successful gank. As we were just mentioning that like, hey, you know, it kind of sucks for this Fiddlesticks that he wasn't able to find get make use out of that, that crow storm and then proves us wrong immediately. He must have heard us talking trash or something like that because he was like, oh, no, 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 no. I got to show the stream that I know how to play this character. Is he? So, with that, we do have Dragon spawning in about a minute here. Rift Herald is also up and available. Where are we expecting to see the next Fiddlesticks ultimate come out as he does, as Goomba Stompin does have access to that ultimate ability once again? Honestly, just send the Ash Arrow from base at the enemy bot lane and have Goomba meet it <laughs> with the Crow Storm. Uh, he's 3 1 1. He has, you know, the Runic Echoes already. He's got a couple stacks on the Dark Seal. He could probably win that. And I mean, at that point, you're just baiting Tannerclef to, you know, have the quick trigger finger on that Black Shield. Like, do you have the reflexes to use it as soon as you see an arrow? Plus, if you're getting hit by that arrow at like tier one or tier two tower slash in base, that is a crazy long stun. Plenty of time for. For Goomba to run down and kill you. Um, but I mean, they're able to pick up the blue buff. They're setting up around this dragon. They have so much vision. Look at this. They have one, two, three, right. four. Is he about to die here? Death Mark goes off. White Wolf is not going to be able to find a kill off of a bow in there. A great crow storm over the wall. Enchanted Crystal Arrow comes out. It's a little too easy at this point as Goomba Stomping is going to be able to stomp his opponent to double kill given over to Melmo. And is one more as Alex Pai is trying to run away here. Looks like we'll be able to keep himself safe this time. He's going to turn around on the cleaner here, buddy. you got no teammates. You need to back up. And it will be yet another dragon going. I do believe we did lose Loud Thoughts for a second there, but he was correct. It is going to be another dragon going over. Uh, it does make it 2-0 in favor of dragons, just as the turret plates ends, and it's more kills onto the carries of Goliath Online. They're getting so fed. They're getting so big, and I'm interested because it's a Glumble Ave, or Umbral Glaive first item. I mixed up my uh, initial continents there. Oof, an Umbral Glaive first item. That is an interesting pickup for the side of Babawan here, saying, you know what, I don't even have to be the carry of this team. Instead, going for that support optimized first lethality item, it is going to mean that this lead that we already see developed for the side of Goliath online, they're sitting now at a three and a half, almost 4,000 gold lead. 
is going to be even easier for them to maintain because it's going to put the pressure on South Dakota University to try and keep up their ward coverage and they constantly are going to be fighting to get any kind of vision coverage around the map here as we do see once again Fiddlesticks is absolutely bullying the bottom lane of the University of South Dakota that's the flash that's the double kill and it's easy and clean when they're always stepped up into the middle of that lane yeah, I don't know what you can even do at this point to try and make sure your bot lane is surviving. Uh, I mean, every lane is just falling apart right now. There's not a whole lot you can do. Envion dropping down really low. One more auto attack. We'll get the clap back, and that's going to be Envion on the scale dropping down extremely low. Alex Pai has shot up into the top side. The Shockwave will find a pullback. Is the scale going to be able to find the kill? They do donate that one over to the scaling top lane pick for South for South Dakota University, so a ray of hope for the Coyotes. We do actually see the Rost completed for White Wolf, but look at how much damage Baboon's doing with that Electric Q, with that double lethality penetration coming through. And I mean, the Umbral Glaive is great twofold. Not only does it set you up to be the assassin that is death pushing people by making sure you have vision control as you roam around the map and set up these different plays, it also just gives the fiddlesticks that much more room to play with right it doesn't have to be all up to the fiddlesticks clearing wards just by zed existing they're clearing wards combo that with cleaner running around with you know control wards and oracle lenses and really making sure that you know your team's in the darkness plays like this happen oh, no oh no trinity my poor man he's gonna be zero and four as he gets picked off by babawan there white wolf trying to come in we are gonna hit a lag delay here looks like the teams are saying so we're going to hit that quick pause really quick while we wait for uh production to let us know whether or not we want to talk through this one or if it's going to be resolved pretty quickly here let's just talk about specifically the ward coverage we keep coming back to that as this fiddlesticks and zed have just been taking absolute control of the bottom line yeah, I mean, when we look at the side of Goliath Online, they can already see you have five control wards in the inventory. That is a super good sign. If you're the coach, you're like, hey, they should listen to me. Good job, guys. Thumbs up. Okay, looks like we are going to throw it over to a quick delay. Do not go anywhere, folks, as we try and get this one. Uh, uh, oh, looks like we're doing no delay, actually. Production just let me know. So we'll be hopping into this one. The unpause coming through here if we follow both of these teams. And Zed is going to be able to make his way away. Flash forward, that's no. going to be the ultimate. Is he going to be able to find this kill? I was like, whoa, <laughs> the dash around. He makes it out alive. It looks like I'm a little bit behind, so let me catch up really quick. As we do see the Fiddlesticks ultimate into the mid lane, they are going to be able to pick up another kill on to Tannerclef, who gives over the Rampage to Melmo, and this should be the mid tower going down as well. Ooh, that's going to be a great shockwave coming up by the Oriana, though in order to stall for some time, clear out the wave a little bit, but is not going to result in any kills there for the side of South Dakota. Instead, we're back into this game apologize for the technical delays there's guys as we hop back into this one and is now 13 to 4 and a solid commanding 5k gold lead at 17 and a half minutes this game is looking to come together though we are looking to see some really good potential come out another nice pick over to the side Oh, wait, they're just trading picks off. They're just going at it. Oh, he actually survives. The shield is alive. Wait, the Caitlyn is able to lift through that when the Ornhorn comes out. He's going to be able to dodge it away. He's oh, able to keep no. himself safe there. He dodges away from both procs of that Ornhorn. Unfortunately, though, it does cost the life of Alex Pye and the White Wolf there, and that is going to mean that the mid lane outer turret will be going down fiddlesticks, <laughs> taking that one up for a little bit longer than we would like to see, but he makes that out alive, so all is well that ends well. Yeah, I mean, what started off as a really strong pick there for the side of the Coyotes just kind of devolved due to um, Baboon just eating so much attention, you know, diving past the towers, just really causing havoc. Uh, you know, Trinity is able to survive thanks to the shielding of Alex Pie, but they diverted so much attention to trying to keep that situation under control. The counter engage comes through from the side of Goliath online. They get the Enchanted Crystal Arrow, they get the cleaner running in, Goomba Stomping coming in, flying in, doing tons of damage, and then you get nice little terps there with that Orn Horn uh, just to really lock down the rest of the fight. Yeah, at this point, with how far ahead Goliath Online is, what is it that 
you know, South Dakota can even do at this point. Because, yes, we keep coming back to, you know, they need a scale. They need to get this cane on a couple of items. They need to get this Kale towards that level 16 is really when she starts to pick up and start carrying these games. Currently sitting at level 12, but, you know, Goliath is so far ahead. Can they even stop Goliath from, you know, taking these objectives? We have a crow store coming in. Looks like the answer is going to be Nose, but Bowen is able to pick up that one. Great! Disengaged there by Trinity in order to keep himself safe away from that one. The Black Shield coming in order to keep this Caitlyn alive from that Enchanted Crystal Arrow. But one more dragon will be going over into the hands of Goliath online. And they are once again sitting at Soul Point pre-20 minutes. So, my answer to your question of what do they do... Uh, as I was going to say, they just simply give up the third dragon. Um, you know, it is Cloud Drake, so even once they get to the soul, it's probably the best soul for this composition in the Fiddlesticks, in the Zed, in, you know, the Karma Orn. They love that bonus move speed upon ultimate activation, so that, like, that's amazing for them. But you're so far behind at Drake 3, you need to give it up. Let them force you into a fight for Drake 4, potentially be in a better position. You know, you can get some bonus farm onto your carries in the Caitlyn and the Kale and the Oriana. This is an interesting 1v1 or 2v2. 2v1, I should be saying, on the bottom side. Bow Bowen is still able to pick up that kill, though. Despite the fact that he took double ultimates from the Orianna and the Kane. Meanwhile, mid lane, though, Goomba Stomp and finds another Crow Storm behind the bottom lane of University of South Dakota. The Coyotes' bottom lane just not getting any mercy here. Great stock watch in order to keep himself alive there, not giving over that shutdown to the Caitlyn. Yeah, we're definitely seeing why this was banned in game one. The Goomba Stomp Fiddle Scare is just, it's too strong right now. Like, they don't have an answer. They're trying to keep wards up. You know, they're roaming around the map. They're even doing it, you know, using buddy system, but they just don't have the vision control needed to deny fiddlesticks. And this is what it feels like when you're up against a good fiddlesticks. You feel like there truly is no safe corner of the map, and you are just getting, you know, jumped on, killed on, feared on, just repeatedly until the game ends and it, it feels so tough to deal with because you're like i just need to ward more and so you ward more and then the enemy team either goes to a different part of the map where your wards are now ineffective or they can even force through the wards like you know having that bonus